A blessed day to everyone and to those who are uh, joining us in our worship here through this live stream. Once again, I would like to uh, focus this reflection on the first reading based on this uh, letter of Paul to the Romans, as I've said several times, this is one of the most beautiful, most compact, most systematic letter of Paul. And so we find also many important lessons being uh, taught here in this letter to the Romans, which we have started about a week ago reading from this letter. In 1948, finally and officially, uh, slavery was declared illegal. And that was the end, official end of slavery. And part of the uh, United Nations de Declaration would say, no one shall be held in slavery or servitude. Slavery and the slave trade shall be prohibited. Yes, slavery may have been officially abolished, but slave type of relationships still exist here and there, not far from our place. For example, employees treated, employers treated their maid worse than a dog. We have heard of that now. Abusing her physically, verbally, psychologically. No. Kinukulong sa bahay. Uh, I remember the news one lost her uh, sight because of the violence she received from her amo. This abon ab ab abominable relationship of slavery is about even in the language we use to describe excessive subservience to powerful persons or nations and we dislike that we cringe at the suggestion that uh, someone is slave of someone the language we use we abhor this insinuation that one is duly and duly subservient to dominant power and I know that uh, many would uh, would be uh, unhappy when they are called tuta ng kano tuta ng china no that subs no over subservience to a foreign power or to someone else we might not like the image of slavery, slave master relationship, but the first reading today in uh, his letter to the Romans employs the imagery of a slave to describe the relationship of people, Christians with God or with sin the question is in what sense are Christians to consider themselves uh, who owe to whom we owe obedience Paul plays on the idea that a slave is one owned by a master to whom the slave is expected to render obedient service. So the question is asked when it is this type of relationship is applied to a believer in relationship to God. Are Christians slaves to sin or to uprightness? In what sense that Christians be slaves to God? Who acquits 
So Paul speaks here of the domination of the risen Christ over the baptized, made holy, justified already, who must constantly appropriate in his or her conduct the effects of Christ, of what Christ has done for him or for her. He calls for obedience of Christians, not to sin, but to Christ and His call of grace. In this obeying, Christians verify in their lives the gift of divine grace and thus become what they have been enabled to become, children of God. Paradoxically, those who make themselves slaves or servants of Christ are those who are truly free. And this is the beauty and the mystery of grace and of our relationship with God. When we assume that obedient attitude towards Christ, it is when we become truly free because the grace of Christ enables us to live not enslaved by our evil tendencies or what is or sinful tendencies called concupiscence but according to the spirit of God that enables us really to live a free Christian life. This is the paradox of what we call being slave of Christ because when we attach ourselves to Christ, there when we become truly free. On the other hand, if we allow sin, our evil tendencies, and we become slaves to this, we become truly slaves, we become truly unfree. But with Christ, there we find true freedom. So we need then to check on ourselves again and again, on our propensity towards evil. And we need to subject to the control of reason, to the control of God's will and grace, these evil tendencies or our own concupiscence. It is also important to remind ourselves, we baptize Christians, Catholics, of the freedom as children of God, which we have received in baptism. And this should grow, this freedom of the children of God should grow every day as we reign over our evil tendencies, our wayward will, and subject this to Christ. As I've said, it is only in Christ when we submit ourselves where we find true freedom. And this also should help us in our life every day that our absolute allegiance is only to God, to Christ, who is our King. And all the allegiances that we have are relative. Why only to God or to Christ? We should have our absolute allegiance because it is only Christ who can save us and who can truly make us free. Other allegiances, other powers are but relative, poor imitation of the true authority and power of Christ. 
our allegiance to authorities, for example, to persons, to ideologies, to groups, to an institution, should be subjected always to critical examination again and again. If these promote the values, true values of the kingdom, of justice, peace, love, service, truth, freedom, well-being, respect. If these, if they help us achieve our goal as children of God. Otherwise, if our allegiance to particular persons, institutions, authorities lead us farther from the values of the kingdom, then our love for ourselves no, should dictate us to shun away, shun those allegiances if they do not promote our freedom as children of God. Christians are called to live their freedom as children of God and not children of the powerful of this world. For as I've said, they cannot save us. Christians who are subservient to falsehood, to evil ideologies, who trade off their dignity as children of God, they are not worthy of such lofty status and name, children of God. And this should challenge us always again and again to have that critical sense of who we owe or give our allegiance, our loyalty. Our loyalty only is to Christ who can make us truly free, who can make us achieve the fullness of our vocation as children of God. Let us then live our dignity as children of God by affirming our freedom and not subservient to powers of this world or people or groups that would pull us away from the values of the kingdom. Amen.